to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, we start with a segment about the Santa Fe Trail anniversary and the story behind the new logo. Then join us for an outdoor segment highlighting the life and conservation of the Bob White Quail. Next, we'll learn about the wonders of Pawnee Rock and have a poem from Ron Wilson. Then we'll end with a look at the trailer for the new Netflix show called Highwaymen. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas Gateway. In 1821, the Santa Fe Trail became America's first great international commercial highway and for nearly 60 years thereafter was one of the nation's great routes of adventure and western expansion. It was roughly 750 miles from towns in western Missouri to Santa Fe and about 500 miles of that trail lay in what would become Kansas. This means Kansas has more miles of the trail than any other state. The trail makes a diagonal slash from northeast to southwest, leaving ruts and stories behind. As we look forward to the Santa Fe Trail's 200th anniversary in 2021, some events are already in the works commemorating the historic anniversary, two of them in Morris County. The Symphony in the Flint Hills will return to Morris County in 2021, and the Voices of the Wind People pageant in Council Grove has been telling the story of the commerce on the trail for decades. Kansas has nine chapters of the Santa Fe Trail Association, and you can find them on the SIFTA website. Find the one nearest you, or the one nearest your favorite stretch of trail, and join today. This is the perfect way to get kids acquainted with the trail's history and to begin gearing up for Santa Fe Trail 200. Another great way to get the kids interested is the geocaching along the trail. Lots of folks have used the search to become acquainted with the trail, adding their own discoveries to the adventure of the trail. Follow SIFTA on Facebook and other social media to keep up with coming events. There are conferences each year that feature distinguished historians and scholars offering new insights into the many aspects of trail history. While planning for 2021, the board agreed that a logo was needed to brand those events. This particular task led to a unique and quite successful partnership. Avila University in Kansas City offers a senior studio course that is the capstone experience for all graphic design majors. The course satisfies the university's requirements for community engagement and service learning by partnering students with real-world clients. SIFTA took advantage of this opportunity by asking the students to submit designs for our 2021 logo. We think you will agree that the winning graphic combines everything we wanted to communicate, the feel of the Santa Fe Trail, as well as the significant dates. The design combines the ubiquitous wagon wheel and reminds us of the constant motion of the trail's history. The student who conceived and executed the idea is Sultan Sultan, a native of Saudi Arabia. Sultan had dreamed of becoming a graphic designer, but educational opportunities in his own country were limited. His wife's job offered a scholarship opportunity, and the couple came to America, Sultan to Avila and his wife to UMKC. Sultan completed his B.A. in graphic design in December and plans to begin his career upon moving back to Saudi Arabia. We are thrilled that the SEFTA will benefit from his talent and training and wish him well as he shares his portfolio with the SIFTA 200th anniversary logo prominently displayed.
To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. As fourth-generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. The northern bobwhite quail is the most well-known native game bird in Kansas, according to Charlie Lee, wildlife management expert for K-State and K-State Research and Extension. The winter months serve as an important time for landowners to consider how to make land more quail friendly. Bob White quail have been making a very strong recovery in western Kansas, according to Jason Wagner, wildlife biologist for the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism. Quail populations in western Kansas are boom or bust because they are closely tied to the timing and amount of precipitation. Conditions over the last three years have allowed for prime quail habitat during nesting and brood rearing times. Quail hatch peaks in late June and early July. Quail also have a tenacious re-nesting behavior, which allows them to continue to attempt to raise broods until they are successful. Bless their hearts. Bob whites are known as an edge species. They thrive in areas that have abrupt changes in habitat. These areas are generally where woody vegetation, like shrubs, meets native grasslands, cropland, or weedy areas. One key component is woody escape cover, preferably shrubs that are three to six feet tall. Quail need residual cover of native warm season grasses to nest in. In order to raise a brood, bobwhites need bare ground with good overhead canopy cover and lots of insects for foraging. Areas of brood rearing habitat have abundant forbs or flowering plants that are not grasses. During the winter months, quail need areas of woody or weedy cover to get out of the extreme weather of western Kansas. Good quail habitat begins with properly managed native warm season grasses. Quail can benefit from common grassland practices like prescribed burning. Trees like honey locusts, elms, and cedars should be removed from grasslands that are being managed for quail. Shrubs like sandhill plum, American plum, and fragrant sumac should be left for escape cover. Shrub thickets should be spaced apart, about as far as you can throw a softball. If there are no shrubs present, planting a variety of shrubs and rows or thickets along the edges of crop fields or rangeland can also improve quail habitat. Conservation Reserve Program, CRP, has helped boost quail populations in Kansas since it began in 1985. Interceding forbs into CRP will also improve the quality of habitat for bobwhites. Grassed terraces or native warm season grass waterways are also excellent ways to improve quail habitat on crop fields. Any native grass strips should be at least 30 feet wide. An easy way to create escape cover for quail is cutting on an easy way to create escape cover for quail is cutting unwanted trees like locust, cedar, and elm, and then loosely stacking them into brush piles. Old windrows and hedgerows can be renovated to further help the local quail population. Trees and windrows can be cut and left where they fall. Osage orange trees can be cut off at ground level and then the stump left unsprayed. The tree will re-sprout at the stump and create the woody escape cover quail require. 
The edges of riparian areas can be feathered by cutting trees along the edge and leaving the cut trees where they fall. Odd areas or strips in cropland can be left unsprayed and untilled to allow for weed growth that would benefit quail. Any odd areas or weedy areas should be left along the edge of crop fields and positioned close to permanent native grasses or woody vegetation. Leaving a strip of ground along the fence rows or roads undisturbed will create areas of edge for the bobwhites. Cover crops may also benefit quail by providing brood rearing habitat, a food source, and escape cover. The experts assure us that managing for quail is not difficult. It just requires some planning this time of year. Come spring, the Bob White will be singing our praises. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged, or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me and they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today, we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. Nevermore do you walk the earth, his spirit rides here still. Roman knows the wild wind blows, Roman knows your legend grows. No one knows if we'll see your lights again. The land here tells a story. It offers up fossils of extinct beasts, ruins of native villages, farmsteads and battlegrounds. Walk the shore of historic Scott Lake and imagine the native peoples on the hillsides above you. Listen, you can hear their voices on the wind. Discover the secrets of Scott County on the ground where history happened or in the comfort of the El Quatalejo Museum and the Jerry Thomas Gallery. I promise you will find an amazing story. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. It's a landmark along the Santa Fe Trail. In fact, it was a landmark for the Plains tribes long before there even was a Santa Fe Trail. Comanche, Kiowa, Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Pawnee tribes held their councils of war and peace. Many Indian battles were fought nearby in the days before the white man came to Kansas. Many of the Plains tribes reportedly used it as an observation point from which they could watch buffalo herds and wagon trains. For pioneers, it marked the halfway point between Missouri and Santa Fe. In 1848, James Birch, a soldier on his way to the Mexican War, wrote, Pawnee Rock was covered with names carved by the men who had passed it. It was so full I could find no place for mine. Many stories have been told to explain how Pawnee Rock got its name. One source for the name comes from the belief that it was sacred ground for the Pawnee Indians who held tribal councils on its flat top. Another from a great battle in which a small band of Pawnees were destroyed by a force of Kiowas, Cheyennes, and Arapahoes. Both come from Pawnee lore. Among the Plainsmen, it is said that the rock got its name in 1826. 
Kit Carson was on his first trip west and only 17. He was working his passage on a wagon train which passed near the rock. While on guard duty, he shot his own mule, thinking it was an attacking Pawnee. His associates commemorated his experience with the name Pawnee Rock. Much of Pawnee Rock was destroyed in the 1870s by the railroad and by settlers for building stone. The remnant was acquired in 1908 by the Woman's Kansas Day Club. In 1909, it was given to the state of Kansas as an historic site. In 1912, a state monument was dedicated amidst a crowd of 8,000 onlookers. Pawnee Rock was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1970 and today operates as Pawnee Rock State Historic Site. About six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better and didn't get better. I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at eight o'clock in the morning and by 11.30, the procedure was all over and it just kept getting better and better. And within six weeks, I was back digging post holes and doing the other hard work that I'd been doing before the accident. And I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Mark your calendars for Tuesday, March 26th in Beloit, where the first ever Stock Growers Field Day will be held by K-State Research and Extension, the Kansas Livestock Association, and the Kansas Bull Test. The event will be highlighted by a market outlook from Cattle Facts, as well as a presentation from well-known reproductive physiologist, Dr. Rick Funston, where he speaks about increasing production efficiency. From there, we'll also play host to over 30 ag-based businesses in the trade show and enjoy breakout sessions where producers can listen to speakers on topics that apply directly to their operation. This event should cater to producers of all size and scale and offer a social aspect as well, so we look forward to seeing you there for the inaugural Stock Growers Field Day in North Central Kansas. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Howdy folks, I'm Ron Wilson, Poet Lariat. Those of us who live out here in the middle of the country get used to one thing, and that is the weather's gonna change. This poem is entitled, Just Wait a Minute, It'll Change. We've had lots of winter weather, so when we got a thaw, the chance to get outside was really quite a draw. It felt like cabin fever, so I was glad to get outside. Cleaned a feeder, built some fence, and managed to get in a horse ride. I stripped down to my shirt sleeves and got a whole, a whole lot of good work done and found it was the spring's first exposure to the sun. The next day I was in the house a paying some ranch bills when I heard a clap of thunder roll across the nearby hills. I tuned in to, to the weather and they proceeded to inform that a wave of snow might follow a local thunderstorm. I just shook my head and went back to working on the books when what I saw out the window made me take a second look. Big, fat, wet snowflakes were falling from the sky. It looked like a full-fledged blizzard passing by. I finished up my paperwork and bundled up to do my chores and found the sun shining brightly across the great outdoors. It made me think about the weather pattern in this Kansas land. It'll change so dadgum fast that it is hard to understand. And I said to my wife as the weather made its turn, you know you live in Kansas when it snows on your sunburn. Happy trail. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. 
based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Many years ago, my seatmate on a flight from Minneapolis, Minnesota to Rapid City, South Dakota with John Fusco. I was reading a story about Hidalgo, the film, and it hadn't been out long. And John had written Hidalgo and another favorite of mine, Thunderheart. We have stayed in touch over the years and I have followed John's successes with delight. His latest, The Highwayman, will be released on Netflix this month. It is another retelling of the story of Bonnie and Clyde, but this time with a focus on the Texas Rangers who ended their crime spree. The film stars Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. There are many connections to the Bonnie and Clyde story in Kansas, including the fact that the death car was stolen in Topeka. But another great Kansas connection to the movie is that Kansan and David Carrico made the holster and rig that Kevin Costner is wearing in the film. Carrico, the master craftsman, has provided leather work for recent films like Hostels with Christian Bale and Wes Duty, and The Sun with Pierce Brosnan, and True Grit with Matt Damon. The list goes on and on. We will do a longer feature on Carrico's career in the not-too-distant future. When you watch The Highwayman, and I know you will, Look out for those Kansas connections to this legendary story. How many bullets you got in you? Sixteen, I think. It might be good to have a doctor look at you sometime. It might be good to have a doctor look at you sometime. I ain't got no bullets in me. Because I was covering you. You may have heard there was a prison break. It was Bonnie and Klein. Governor, this has to end. They've committed dozens of armed robberies and several cold-blooded murders. What do you plan to do about Bonnie and Klein? We will capture them. Write that down and underline it twice. There's only one man who can take them down. I'll come back. Hey, you got room for one more? Not even packed. Ah, oh, Judas Priest, get in. This is 1934. Gangsters, submachine guns. And you put cowboys on Bunny and Clyde? Texas Rangers. This is an emergency alert. Police are not yet releasing details, but have stated that Bonnie and Clyde may have struck again. Forgive me for the for I have seen. This is a highly coordinated operation. So much pain and suffering. Roadblocks, air surveillance. Your time has passed, cowboy. What the hell is the world coming to? Used to be you had to have talent to get published. Now all you gotta do is shoot people. See the devil dressed in white. She used her foot to turn him over so he could see what was about to happen. Hi, sweetie. This has gone far enough. I'm gonna take them down. What a fine idea. Let him sing. Oh, oh. Who are you, fellas? Suppose we're the bad guys. Oh, hallelujah to me. I saw the devil. You come to the wrong place, mister. Around here, Clyde is king. But he didn't see me. Clyde might be king, but I'm a Texas Ranger, you little shit. Now it didn't see me. Welcome to Kansas Gateway 
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.